and welcome to another edition of Our Story. I'm Dr. Chris Bacon with the Nashville Stars. When we think of integration in sports, our thoughts immediately turn to Jackie Robinson, breaking Major League Baseball's color barrier in 1947. But that didn't end all segregation in sports. For years, youth baseball still separated kids based on the color of their skin. But as you'll see, all it took was one simple gesture to spark change. This would have been home plate right well, here. Uh, been up by Murphy. Yeah, it would be, it would be closer to Murphy Street. Uh, Howard Gentry Jr. and Gino Marchetti Jr. walk and remember. A hospital and other buildings stand where they once played as kids in the 1960s. Gentry is the current criminal court clerk of Davidson County in the 20th District and former vice mayor for Nashville. Marchetti is a longtime attorney in Nashville. Their friendship started when integration was slow to take shape. We moved to 22nd Avenue North, which was uh, not integrated there. We were, we were like the third black family to move into the neighborhood uh, on that street in that part of 22nd. Um, so I lived in a house on 22nd. Two blocks up the street was were restaurants that I couldn't go in because I was black. Um, there was a park that I couldn't fish in the little lake. I couldn't swim in the swimming pool, which was Centennial Park. Uh, I was told by my parents to stay off the baseball field. A time during unrest where sit-ins and demonstrations were the norm protesting segregation. I remember demonstrations in front of Morrison's Cafeteria uh, on West End. I remember driving by one night and there were all these people sitting down out in front. And I asked Dad, what's going on? He said, just some people don't know what the right thing to do is. But a simple invitation linked these two together in 1964. Marchetti's dad coached a junior knot hole baseball team at Centennial Park and offered nine-year-old Gentry and his friends a chance to scrimmage. This was before, before the uh, season started. Uh, Y'all needed some extra players out there on the field to do your scrimmage and, and Mr. Marchetti asked us if we wanted to come on the field and, and practice. We were sitting there and I remember sitting on that fence, hang on it, and dad said, you boys want to play? And I remember him looking around and he said, yeah. And so we gathered up who we could and came on the field and we had a pretty good day that day. And the scary day was the day that Mr. Marchetti started walking up my driveway, our, our, my walkway. We used to keep our door open, screen, and I saw him, I remembered him. And he, to me, he was the biggest guy in the world. You know, he was just big, had muscles and stuff and to me, and he wore t-shirts. And he walked up my steps. I thought, I said, is this man going to come tell my parents I was on the field? Because I wasn't supposed to be on the field. And he asked to see my father. And he came in the house, and he basically said that, uh, that he wanted um, uh, me to come try for the team. I wasn't really comfortable that my daddy was going to say yes, but my dad told Mr. Marchetti, and I can remember this, and I couldn't find the letter, but I actually have the letter he wrote Mr. Marchetti, uh, telling him that he's going to let me try for the team, but you have to promise me that you're going to protect not just my son, but any other black kids that, that uh, tried out. And of course, Mr. Marchetti said he would. And I do remember dad on the phone one night. Um, he got a call from Notho headquarters, I guess, and said, uh, well, we heard you got some black boys playing on your team. Um, I could kind of overhear it. And he said, yeah, what about it? He said, well, we don't know if, we don't think that should happen. And dad said something along the lines of, well, that's interesting, I'd, that'd make a good story. He said, what are you talking about? He said, well, a friend of mine from Father Ryan um, uh, John Sigenthaler to Tennessean. He, this would be a good, interesting story. And they said, oh, well, well, let us think about it some more. And I think I was the last dad heard about it. But that's the kind of man Gino Marchetti was. Uh, I mean, I guess he thought that it was just the right thing to do, and he did it. And he didn't make a big deal out of it, which he shouldn't have. 
and uh, uh, but I've made a big deal out of it, and and, uh, and I'm glad the family uh, knows about it now because I hope, especially for the kids, I'm talking about the grandkids, his grandkids. I hope they understood how how important that was.